All right, hello guys, it's Perlin here, and today I'm joined by Gunn Hudson. And Gunn is a world traveler, and he's done a lot of couch surfing and a lot of traveling, so he has a lot of knowledge in this area. So today we're going to be discussing traveling and everything that goes along with that, from you know how to get on the road, from the different fears you have, to saving money probably, to um, yeah, like everything that's involved with travel and couch surfing, we're going to be discussing today. So, Gunn, at the beginning, can you just give us a quick background about where you're from and what type of traveling you've done and where you've been traveling? Yeah, sure. Um, I live in Perth, Australia, and I'm 27. I've been tra traveling since I think I was about 18, 19. And yeah, I've been traveling through Europe, uh, a lot of Asia, America, and Australia, obviously. Um, I've done a lot of couch surfing and couch surfed in Europe quite a lot and all through USA and I host people here in Perth, Australia. And have you done um, other types of traveling as well? So you've done couch surfing, have you done like staying with friends or staying in hostels or like staying like in, in private rooms or things like that? Yeah, definitely. So the first time I went traveling, it's very common in Australia to go on a Kentucky trip which is like an organized uh, bus trip with about 30 people. And that's really good uh, for the first time traveling because you automatically have friends. You don't have to worry about where you're going. Um, but it's kind of like what we call binge traveling <laughs> in that we did. Yeah. Um, you, you only get two weeks off for the whole year. And then I think we visited eight countries in 12 days. And it's you don't really get to meet anybody that's local. And you get to see the postcard places, but... That's about it. Yeah. So, yeah. I've, I've, um, I do recommend it to beginners, but I think once you've done it once or twice, you want to see the real, the real place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've definitely done that, uh, that type of travel as well, where I'm just like smashing through like country after country and, you know, barely getting enough time to, you know, to even see the sights and just sort of drinking and, and especially if you're in like a big group, because then wherever you go, you've got, people to talk to and people to, to um, party with and so instead of meeting the locals or even meeting other travellers in different places you go, you've just got this one massive big group that sort of moves around. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Down. Yeah. It has yeah. its ups um, but as I said, I think after you do it once or twice, you want to meet some new travellers, some locals and, and really get the authentic uh, experience. So Yeah. And, and have you found that uh, couch surfing is the best way to do that? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's really amazing way because it's so cheap, and um, which is obviously the benefit most people get into it for. Uh, um, but I, would, I probably recommend doing about fifty percent of the time that you travel. It's okay. really good, and I recommend it. But you don't want to do it every single night. Sometimes you want some alone time, or if you're single, you want to pick up like. It's kind of bad to bring someone back to, <laughs> like, your host's house, right? So, yeah, yeah. Um, but I usually, when I first land into a country, I'll catch surf on the first couple of nights because um, then you have somewhere set up to go to yeah. and they can just get familiar with the country, maybe take a good day off and sleep. Uh, just they can give you tips like the, the currency and just tell you, oh, don't shop at this shop. That's really crap. Like, this one's way better or something. Yeah, yeah, and I've definitely found the first couple of days in a country is when like you can get ripped off super easily, or like you just you, you're just unaware and you spend like double the amount for something that that you shouldn't have, or you know, and it's it's yeah like any and also you're you're getting jet lag and you're getting over you know the culture shock and the culture change, and so yeah, like I've done mostly hostel um, traveling. And or staying mm -hmm. with friends, and I always book like a good, you know, at least two three nights at a hostel, um, just so I can. And usually I try and get a private room so I can sort of ease into wherever I'm at instead of just going straight away into like eight bed dorm room and moving the next day and and stuff like that. It's, it's yeah, that's a really a really good tip there. Take uh, schedule one or two days at the start of your holiday just mm -hmm. to get acclimatized and. And ready for your holiday. <laughs> Good times. Yeah. And so, um, 
I haven't done as much couch surfing, but a mm. lot of times when I mention couch surfing as like a really cheap, good resource for people to use if they, um, you know, if they're saying they don't have enough money or travel's too expensive, they always come back with, oh, couch surfing, you know, I, I don't want to get murdered and I, I don't want to get killed, you know, that's, that's like the easiest way to disappear in some country and, you know, it's totally unsafe and I would never you know, sleep on, you know, with some stranger that, I, that I've never met. Um, how have you found the experience and have you had any of those fears? Sure. Um, so most people get into couch surfing because they're traveling and they've run out of money and they're talking to some people at a hostel and they say, oh, yeah, just do this thing. Couch surfing is free. You stay at people's houses. And so they get into it not knowing anything, not having any experience or any friends in it which is probably not the best way to get into it. Um, like anything in life, you can, there are pro probably good and bad people, but I've only experienced amazing people through couch surfing. And that's because you can very simply filter through people on couch surfing and just only meet people that have got some experience or met other people. It's kind of like um, if you've used eBay, you want to only buy off someone that's already made some transactions on eBay. And they have the little rating system with like, yeah. oh yeah, this was a good seller or a good buyer. And so it's similar in couch surfing. So if you only stick to people that have already had two or three transactions or met a few people, you, you really can't get it wrong. Um, it's, it's the most amazing people. And what I what I say to people is these, these other people are letting strangers into their home and so that kind of automatically makes them a pretty person. like the type of person that would invite a traveler into their home, put them up for free, and want to show them around the city. Automatically, they're they're like a pretty awesome person or a traveler themselves. And so, yeah, that that kind of cuts out all the. Um, we have a word for them in Australia here. I probably don't want to repeat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And and it's definitely and like I've heard that. Um, couch surfing, like they, they take the safety very seriously. So there's like, they've, they've got a very good system about rating and about uh, filtering out bad people out of the system. Um, and so it's it's a like it's a really good resource and it's a really safe resource. I'm sure there's a lot of other, you know, travel options out there that aren't as safe um, as couch yeah, surfing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I would rather couch surf. I feel safer couch surfing than in a multi dorm hostel, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I leave my bags in in my host's house and um yeah, like it's it's very safe, definitely, if you go about it the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and and, and because it's like you I would imagine you wouldn't have to worry about things getting uh stolen as much because it's just you and your host type thing. Where in an eight bed dorm yeah, or a sixteen bed dorm it could be anyone. So like would be yeah. thieves, you know, could feel a bit more anonymity because, you know, there's there's not just like one other person staying with you. There's like, you know, sixteen other people and they're coming and going every day. And so yeah. um so definitely in hostels you have to like lock up all of your stuff, you know, when you go out and you have to um you know and, and even like I always get bathroom stuff taken. Like I accidentally leave stuff in the bathroom and I come back like an hour later, it's just gone. I'm like, damn it <laughs> every time. And stuff, so, yeah, yeah, yeah but some hostels are not so good, aren't they? <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah. A, a question I do get a lot is, um, what if I'm a single female? Um, mm. the couch surfing seems quite scary for them. And my advice is, mm. I'm, I've done it as a single male and also as a couple with my girlfriend. Mm. Um, and I've hosted, because I'm a single, when I was hosting as a single male, I hosted uh, a lot of pairs of girls, so if you want to do this as a girl by yourself, it's um, quite acceptable to do it with a friend. And so I've hosted two girls at a time, and they come with their friend, and then they feel safe. Mm -hmm. um, I've also hosted couples and single males, but not too many single females. They do do it, but I think generally they stay with females. So yeah. it just uh, just for a bit of peace of mind there. Cool, cool. That's a that's a common question. And um, another big a big uh, question that I always have or sort of complaint is that they just don't have enough money to travel, or they think travel is too expensive. 
And when I talk to people more that, that have that as their main, um, their main issue with traveling, is they seem to have this concept that, you know, you have to go on this all-inclusive package tour at a hotel, you know, where you're, you, you're up in like the Ritz and you're going and you're doing all these activities every time and you burn through like thousands of dollars within like, you know, two weeks and then you have to come home. And, and they think that because I've seen it on like advertised on TV or different flyers, I think that's like the main way that people travel and you need a lot of money if you want to be doing that. Um, and so, yeah, and I mean, I've definitely experienced that, you know, sometimes traveling can be cheaper than living um, at home in Australia because Australia is pretty expensive for like rent and food and, and things like that. And especially um, like South America, Central America, Asia is all very super cheap to travel. And um, yeah, just the, the perception of the expense of travel is very different from reality. Um, in my experience, but how have you found um, the expense of travel and putting money aside or saving money like while you're living in Australia to be able to travel? Yeah, definitely. Um, you're definitely spot on there with the style that you travel. I guess the slower that you travel, the cheaper it is. So if you're only away for one, if you only have one week of the year, most people do that binge traveling and go to all the hotels. But if you can get away for a month or or even, um, it doesn't have to be a month, but the, the, sl the slower you move around, the cheaper it can be and you can stay in one place um, for a lot longer and, and not spend much money. Um, what I've done quite a few times is just save up for the flight and just, just get out of home, just uh, get over there and once you're over there, like, you'll get by on what you have. Yeah. And the main thing is just committing to buying the flight and then and then you just save every dollar you have. You're like, oh, should I go out this weekend or I'm going traveling soon so like, I could use that money. So you save it. Yeah. Once you've bought the flights, like, it just happens, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I know a few people who do that. And it seems to be um, the just like the values that you have above other things. So if, if you're like, oh, you know, I'm saving a little bit for travel sometime or other, then a movie or going out to dinner or going, you know, buying more drinks is sort of a higher value because there's no time limit. But if you, like, buy a ticket and then there's a deadline and then you're like, wow, you know, every every dollar that I spend is a dollar I don't have over there. And so the value of saving for travel goes way, way up because, you know, you, you, you want money to travel and it's coming up. And so, um, yeah, definitely deadlines is very good for that. And... Also, like if you if you really want to travel, but you seem you sort of feel like you're being brought down by all the different expenses you have. If you look at it and say, "What do I value more?" Like, do I value having different, you know, magazine subscriptions or um, different monthly expenses at home, or living a little bit of a higher lifestyle uh, where you're at, or do you value travel and experiences and the different things that travel can bring you more? And then if you look at that sort of subjectively, then I found it's a lot easier because when I'm not thinking about it, I'm just living my life, I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, I do want to, you know, do this or I do want to do that at home and I don't sort of think. But then when I look at, like, oh, if I want to travel or not, I'm like, I'm always like, yeah, I'd rather travel over having this. And so, yeah, whenever I think like that, um, I always seem to save more money. So. Yeah, definitely. And what you mentioned earlier with a lot of the countries uh, that are cheaper than Australia... Like, if you're out drinking, in a nightclub here, we'd often spend like $12 for a drink. Mm. And that would get you 12 drinks in Thailand, where, where you are now. Yeah. So, if you forgo that one drink with a friend here, you could, it's, it's way worth it to, uh, to save that money. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and it's, it's, it's so good. And like, for this trip at the moment, because I've just been in uh, Bulgaria for SSM and now I'm in Thailand... Mm -hmm. And so I was traveling for a good um, like two and a half months. And so um, in Australia, I'm staying in a shared house. So I just have one room of stuff. And I was like, well, I don't want to pay for rent while I'm gone. So I'm just going to put everything in storage, which is only like $70 a month for storage. And so that's another option for people if, they, you know, if they're worried about the expenses that they still have to pay while they're traveling. Um, if you can 
somehow put it in storage or reduce those expenses or sell your car and just sort of uh, minimize your life at home, then it's a lot easier to be able to uh, do like the slower travel um, overseas mm. because you have less expenses and it's cheaper to be on the road traveling than it is to stay in Australia. So if you can replace those expenses with the travel expenses, you can go a lot longer. But definitely if you have all of the expenses still there in Australia, plus all the travel expenses that can add up quickly. Yeah, so, definitely. Um, That's a very good point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I found it efficient to sort of like set up your lifestyle like over time um, for travel. So, you know, you sort of buy less stuff that you have to put in storage or you have less, you know, big expenses at home that are just always ticking over. So when travel does come up or when some event or some friend says, oh, come over here, you know, we're going to go to this place, you can just pick up and say, yep, sweet, I'm, I'm there. And you have to do minimal work and effort to be able to jump on the road and, and uh, start traveling. I, um, I, for quite a few years, I was in and out of my parents' house because I'd go away traveling and I'd rent out my room. And then I'd come back and my room was still rented out, so I would just move back in with my folks <laughs> until the room was available again. So, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. and definitely like you, once you start getting into travel and you start getting the travel bug and you're like, oh, I want to travel more, you just come up with all of these ideas about how you can save money and how you can travel, you know, longer and further. And, um, yeah, it, it sort of becomes like a lifestyle instead of just uh, you know, an event or a hobby type thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just mention a bit more on couch surfing. Yeah. Um, while we're talking about what you can do at home to prepare for traveling, mm -hmm. I really recommend uh, getting into couch surfing before you go traveling because then when you do go traveling, you'll be a very attractive guest. And so what I recommend to most people is head over to couchsurfing.org and create your profile. And then because you have, it will say like zero, 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 as in zero friends, stay with zero people, had zero people over. You're not a very attractive uh, traveler to anybody at that stage. So the easiest way to get into it is you can look up a local event in your city. So for example, here in Perth, I go and play Frisbee um, with some travelers and just meet some really cool people. And then they, you add each other and then you've got a few friends and then you may want to uh, have someone over at your house. And this sounds a bit crazy to your average person. They're like, whoa, having like someone I don't know stay at my house. Um, just try it and pick someone that, or go and meet them for a coffee first maybe if you feel more comfortable the first time. And pick someone that has a nice photo and also make your photo nice. And what I mean by this is a photo you can see the face and that you're smiling in. You'd be amazed, because it's a traveling website, everybody puts this photo of the Grand Canyon, and they're like this big in the photo. And like, wow, look, I'm a traveler, I've been to the Grand Canyon. But when, you, when you're inviting someone into your house, it's like a psychological thing. You want to be able to see their face like you and I are now. Yeah. And, and see that they're a real person. And just doing that will put you like really far above everyone else. That's, yeah. that's, that's really good once, tips. Once you've uh, hosted a few people, when you do go traveling, for starters, you'll have now three or five friends in probably places you've never heard of, and you'll want to go visit those countries, which is a great way to pick where to go traveling. And also, if you don't stay with the people, you don't have to stay with the people that stayed at your house, but when you go traveling, other people will see that you host people, so you must be a nice person, so they have no problems hosting you. So it's, it's kind of, it's not like you don't have to trade my house for their house in Brazil. Like I can have a Brazilian stay here and then go stay in Germany um, with somebody else. You know, it's just kind of, you pass on the karma and, and it all goes around, I guess. Yeah. And the, um, the event, the couch surfing events, that's on the website, yeah? Yeah, definitely. It's also, if you don't, if this is a bit much for you and you've never done anything like this, there is a really good community and they just, uh, if you're traveling, I often check in to the website just to see what's going on because sometimes there'll be a party and all the travelers in that area will be like, yeah, this is an awesome party, like out of the city a little bit, but we're going to get together and, and pool in a car or something. Hmm. 
Yeah, you'll, you'll find out some really good information. Or they have a meetup just at a pub. I was in, um, my very first couch surfing was in Amsterdam. And we were talking before we started recording. In the big cities, it's a little bit harder because there's lots of travelers and there's less people hosting. So what I recommend if it's a, a big tourist city like Amsterdam or you're in uh, Los Angeles, you said? Um, yeah, well, I, I, I had a very similar one where I was in uh, San Francisco and, San and Francisco. I looked up the events and there was a meetup at a pub and I went along and I was talking to different people and, you know, and I met some people that um, didn't have a place that they could uh, host me, but they had friends who were couch surfers that had um, places, but the, the, there was people already staying there, but it's a, it's a really good way with these meetups because then people get to see you and they can, you know, like a word of mouth is very powerful, so yeah. they can introduce you to their friends or they can get you in contact with different people and... Um, and I was going down to Los Angeles, and there was a guy staying uh, close by there, and that I met in the San Francisco meetup, and he hosted me for a little bit. Um, so yeah, so it's you, you'll never know like how you'll get hosted from couch surfing, but definitely get in the community and you know start going to events and start talking to people, and it'll just sort of naturally, naturally evolve. Yeah, it's a really exciting adventure, just not knowing where you're going to be staying yeah, yeah. and uh, going to a pub hoping that you'll meet someone that will put you up. It's, it's a little bit scary, a little bit out of your comfort zone, but it's, it's exciting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and how have you found, um, have you done mostly solo travel or have you done travel with uh, your girlfriend or in like bigger groups? Yeah, so I've done about half and half. Before I met my girlfriend, I did a lot of solo travel, mm -hmm. and that was through uh, Europe, and that was fantastic because I had people staying at my house here in Perth, and they were from a very small town in Germany. I haven't even heard of the town, but when I was over there, I thought, oh, I might as well go visit these these girls. They were cool. They were like, we partied together. They were good fun. So I went over to this town, and they were um, during their exams at university, so they said, oh, we're a bit busy, can you do some other stuff first? So I couch surfed with a bunch of people in their town, and it was such a small town, by the end of one month, I knew nearly everybody uh -huh. in the town. And nice. we'd just go out to the nightclubs, and everyone would be like, hey, Gun, like, hey, how you going? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was, it was really amazing. Like, couch surfing with some local person, you wouldn't go and see like the Grand Canyon if you're in America or something. Yeah. But they might take you to their best friend's 21st birthday party. Yeah. And you're the only Australian there. And so like you're a little celebrity in this <laughs> birthday party. And it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. I like so, it. I like um, it. I've also, sorry to answer your question, I've also been with my girlfriend through America. Mm -hmm. And um, I recommend both. Yeah, they were both really good. Yeah, we stayed. We stayed with some amazing hosts, um, both male and female. I don't think they mind when you're a couple. And yeah, we we changed it up about half and half. We did half couch surfing and half a hostel or camping or, or something like that. Yeah, because we wanted some alone time also. Yeah, to do some couple stuff. Yeah, and and I'm sure it'd be a great, great way to save money as well because I've been in lots of places where it's just set up for two. Like 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 heaps of places in Central America and like all through Cuba and stuff. It's just all everything set up for like a pair. So and you pay the same yeah. if, you're, if you're you know single type thing. Yeah, you get to split costs. So uh, traveling with your partner is really amazing. Not not only cheaper, but it it'll bring you together. Um, really, like I think it's the best thing you can do for your relationship is go traveling together. Yeah. Well. That's it. You can manage to get along. <laughs> uh, I've, I've, I've heard that it's like the the uh, the decider. So like, if, if you're not sure, yeah. you go traveling, and that'll either completely end the relationship, or you're like, you you'll be you'll be set after that. Like, yeah, it it, it definitely it throws you into situations where you get to see <laughs> see someone's true colors because you're sort of tested from tiredness or you know you know different environments, and um and yeah, you get to see if you can if you can you know get get along together for sure. I've done a, a bit of travel with uh, different people, um, like as with like sort of bigger groups or smaller groups, and but mostly I've done solo travel, and I found solo travel is great because you're sort of forced to 
meet new people and um, and also you're kind of easier to like to invite into people's groups. So yeah, I like when yeah. I, I've just been around in a hostel and then I'm just like alone and then I just go up to some group I'm like, hey guys, you know what's happening? And they're like, oh, hey, you, you're just here alone? Uh, sweet, come and, c- come and join. You know, we're going over here or we're going over there or it's good times. Yeah, what you're saying, uh, definitely. When you're by yourself, it's, it's, it's much easier to have an adventure um, and be invited to somewhere. When you're with your partner, it's, you kind of stick to each other, same as when you're in a group of people, yeah. But yeah. they both have their benefits, definitely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Awesome. It's, it's, it's been a great discussion. There's been some awesome uh, you know, different advice and, and things about travel and couch surfing. Is there any other last um, tips that you want to say to anyone who's thinking about traveling or who you know wants to get on the road more? Um, just do it. Just book your ticket and uh, get out there. And meeting people is definitely the most amazing part of traveling. People ask me what's my favorite country that I've been to, and I've been to quite a lot. But my answer is never directly related to the country. It's related to the people that I met there or the people that I shared exploring that country with. And so the connections of friends you make is, uh, is definitely the most important thing. And uh, that's, that's where you get the enjoyment from. Like, um, I'm looking forward to meeting up with you soon, either yeah. coming to Thailand or wherever our next adventure is. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, yeah, because we, 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 we met brief, briefly at uh, SSM, but um, you, you had sort of jet lag for a lot of the times. So, like, I, I remember talking to your girlfriend, and, and she's like, oh, he's been sleeping for so long. And she, and she, like, she got a big plate of food to bring up to you in, <laughs> in the hotel room. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was, it, yeah. It was funny. That was that was the morning after the big party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was a bit hungover then. Good so. times, good times. Okay, thanks very much, Gun. Um, yeah, it's, it's been some great advice, and and also if uh, anyone has any questions for you, just post it underneath this video. If anyone has any questions, you can you can answer them for them. Yeah, of course. If anybody is starting out uh, making couchsurfing, link your couchsurfing profile under this video, mm-hmm. and I can give you some tips on how to improve it. Um, I, whenever my friends join couchsurfing, they're straight away 98% above everyone else <laughs> just, from putting, just from putting half an hour effort into your profile. So All definitely right. worth it. I like it. All right. Great. Thanks, guys. Speak to you next time.